it's a real great pleasure to start the afternoon session with Andrea Malchiodi from uh, Warwick, who will tell us about the utilization of surfaces with conical in your hand. <coughs> okay, thank you, and uh, also especially thanks to all the organizers for uh, inviting me here. I mean, I'm really pleased to also have finally met uh, Eugenio Calabi, so I'm, I'm very excited. So it's really, for me, a great opportunity to, to, to scrap a seminar. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I would like to talk about some uh, sort of long-term project uh, jointly with uh, different people. So Daniele Bartolucci, Alessandro Carlotto, who is here, Francesca De Marquis uh, and David Ruiz. Okay, uh, so let me start, uh, as we saw yesterday, with the uniformization problem. Eh? So I will consider a compact surface uh, sigma with metric G and no boundary. Uh, so a classical problem uh, in geometry is to find uh, somehow the best possible metric uh, on, on the surface. Uh, so for example, whether you can deform uh, the metric so that you get uh, constant Gaussian curvature. Okay, so due to the, to the uniformization theorem, this is the case, and uh, the sign of the curvature depends on the topology of sigma. So uh, if G stands uh, for the genus, uh, for genus zero, you can get positive curvature, uh, for genus equal to one, zero curvature, and uh, for genus greater than one, negative curvature. So this is an, an if and only if. And, uh, this is somehow how far I can keep up with uh, Donaldson's talk. Eh? So I will, uh, <laughs> uh, I will stick uh, to, to two dimensions, uh, and I will consider this problem, uh, which Real is dimensions. kind of, uh, sorry. Real dimensions. Real dimensions too. Yeah, this, it's really, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Okay, uh, I'll do my best. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> so I, I consider a problem of uh, fixing the surface and uh, endpoints, uh, P1, Pm, on, on sigma, uh, some angles, uh, positive angles, theta1 and theta m. And the question would be to uh, deform conformally the metric to get uh, constant uh, Gaussian curvature on such an object, uh, keeping uh, somehow prescribing the conical structure at, uh, at these points. Okay? So uh, that will be my notation. Uh, so if you choose a, a conformal metric in a normal coordinates near a given point uh, pi, okay. So I call theta i uh, the opening angle uh, of this cone, and uh, I call theta i. I write it as uh, two pi times uh, one plus uh, uh, alpha i, okay. And alpha i uh, will be greater than minus one. Okay, so that we get uh, uh, positive angles, which can exceed uh, 2 pi. Okay. So uh, with this notation, somehow the singular structure is encoded uh, in a divisor, uh, so which is just a collection of uh, the singular points uh, with the singular weights uh, uh, alpha i. Okay, so uh, this comes uh, uh, somehow to a, to a PDE, a Liouville equation. So uh, in the smooth case, if you deform uh, the metric conformally, and if you write the conformal factor conveniently as uh, e to the 2w times g, uh, then that's the transformation law for the Gaussian curvature. So it comes with the Liouville equation, and kg tilde will be the new Gaussian curvature after the conformal uh, transformation. So the problem is, is uh, reduced to a PDE, and uh, in, in the presence of a divisor, uh, you get uh, this singular version, uh, so you simply subtract off uh, some uh, Dirac deltas with uh, the weights uh, alpha j. Okay, so I have a some slightly complicated, more uh, slightly more complicated expression for writing down the angles, but uh, you get a cleaner uh, equation here, and uh, you get some Dirac deltas uh, at uh, at the singular points. Okay, so if you take uh, uh, a standard cone, then uh, you can get it just by folding uh, uh, nicely uh, a piece of paper. So the Gaussian curvature will be zero on the smooth part, uh, while you get uh, a Dirac delta at the tip with uh, uh, weight uh, minus two pi times alpha. Okay, so in particular for uh, uh, alpha negative, uh, so this would be a standard cone, uh, and uh, for alpha positive, then you get an orbifold uh, with angle greater than, uh, than two pi. All right, uh, so there is a, a constraint on uh, somehow the function to be prescribed uh, by the gauss bonnet formula, okay? So if we want uh, uh, the new curvature to become constant, then uh, kg tilde has to be equal to some constant rho. And rho is assigned, prescribed basically by the, uh, the gauss bonnet formula, 
okay? which you can get uh, basically by smoothing out uh, the singularities, uh, so you round them off uh, and that's uh, how you get uh, this formula. So uh, a useful example to keep in mind is the American football, so I will uh, actually use this uh, uh, several times, and uh, the integral of uh, the Gaussian curvature over the smooth part amounts uh, with this notation to 4 pi 1 plus alpha. Okay, because in the Gauss-Bonnet formula uh, you have to compensate uh, the curvature of the two conical singularities, each of them carrying uh, an amount of curvature minus 2 pi alpha. Okay, so you have to add uh, 4 pi alpha to the smooth part. Okay, uh, actually uh, other values of rho can also be interesting uh, for uh, actually uh, physical reasons. In fact, uh, singular UV equations, or even regular ones, uh, appear in physical models like uh, chern simons theory, uh, electroweak theory, and uh, also as a mean field equation in stationary flows. Okay, so in these cases uh, uh, basically there is no uh, particular constraint on the parameter rho. So um, for those problems it just plays the role uh, of a physical parameter. But for the geometric problem there is a constraint uh, given by the gauss bonnet formula. Alright, so this is a problem with the uh, variational structure. Uh, you can uh, somehow desingularize the equation by a change of variables. Uh, so first of all you solve uh, uh, for the uh, Laplace equation equal to a Dirac delta, so you get the Green's function on, uh, on the surface, which has a logarithmic uh, uh, singularity okay, near the point. And uh, if you just make a change of variables, uh, then the new equation you get uh, somehow is more uh, regular, so the singularities are gone. Uh, but you get a weight uh, in front uh, of the exponential term. Okay? And uh, so I'll write down uh, the equation, uh, so which is uh, a problem totally equivalent to the previous one, minus delta u equal to rho uh, h of x e to the 2u, say minus 1. And uh, the weight function h of x is positive uh, and behaves like uh, the distance from the singularities to the power 2 alpha i. Okay, so it might uh, blow up or vanish uh, depending on the sign uh, of alpha. And, uh, uh, okay, so here's the variational structure. So you have to find, uh, you can find solutions as critical points of, uh, of this functional, uh, which has uh, the Dirichlet energy, so we saw this functional in various fashions uh, uh, in these days. Two row, so then there is a linear term, uh, and then uh, a tricky term uh, which involves uh, a logarithm of the integral of h of x uh, times uh, e to the 2u. And somehow this is the most tricky term uh, to, to understand. Alright, and you do it uh, using the moser tudinger uh, inequality. Uh, so maybe differently from uh, Boo's talk, uh, I mean I will need uh, really the correct uh, constant here, so I will uh, really care very much about it. So that's the moser tudinger inequality. So with my notation, uh, uh, it's, uh, the constant is 1 over 4 pi, okay, so I'm putting uh, e to the 2u, and u bar is the average, I'm sorry? I forgot the logarithm. Okay, well, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, so you cared about finiteness, but uh, yeah, um, okay. Uh, and uh, u bar is the average uh, of the function u on the surface, which makes uh, somehow the inequality uh, consistent, okay? And uh, so the constant 1 over 4 pi sharp, uh, uh, because you can uh, insert uh, into the inequality uh, bubble functions, okay? <coughs> which uh, have this form, uh, so you fix uh, a point x uh, on the surface and uh, you are basically developing a, a spherical metric uh, near, near the point x. Okay? So when the parameter lambda gets, tends to infinity, they become more and more concentrated and in fact the conformal volume uh, converges to 4 pi times uh, the Dirac delta at the point x uh, uh, you consider and uh, the metric is becoming more and more uh, round. Okay, so with this choice, uh, both sides of the equation uh, diverge uh, at the same rate. All right, so, uh, but here there is a weight function, okay, uh, which behaves in this way. 
And the best constant uh, was found uh, by Chen and Tryonov, and there is also some related work by Chang and Yang in, uh, say, domains of R2. Uh, so here's uh, the best constant. Uh, so it depends uh, on uh, uh, the weights uh, alpha j in front of the singular points. Okay, so let me comment on this. Uh, when alpha is negative, uh, which means uh, the, say, when you have locally like a standard cone with opening angle le less than 2 pi, uh, h of x uh, is a singular term, okay? So you expect a worse uh, constant because you have a diverging uh, uh, wave function here, okay? But when alpha is negative, you don't get a better constant uh, uh, because somehow you can uh, consider uh, one of those uh, bubbling functions uh, I showed before <coughs> and uh, you let it concentrate uh, at a point where h of x uh, is not vanishing. Okay, so you don't see any, uh, say, advantage uh, from the vanishing of H uh, at the singular points. Okay, you concentrate volume uh, elsewhere. And uh, so you get uh, exactly the same constant uh, as before. Okay, so that's the reason why you see that constant there. And you pick up somehow the most uh, negative weight uh, uh, among uh, uh, all the ones uh, you have. Okay, because that's where you pay uh, the most, uh, most the price of having a singular weight. Okay, so what's uh, the consequence uh, of this inequality? Uh, is that when rho is uh, sufficiently small, then you can easily control uh, the logarithmic term uh, by means of the Dirichlet energy. Okay, and therefore uh, your functional has a global minimum. Okay, so just apply the direct methods uh, of the calculus of variations. All right, so uh, then uh, there are three geometric cases. Uh, so uh, that's uh, the value of rho uh, constrained by the gauss bonnet formula. And uh, there are three cases. Uh, so the so-called subcritical case, which is the one I described before. So you have a nice coercive functional which you can, uh, which you can minimize. Okay, coercive means that it goes to infinity when you uh, uh, diverge in norm. Then there is a critical case when you have uh, exactly equality. Okay, so the functional is bound below but uh, not coercive anymore. So this can be sort of tricky. And the supercritical case when rho exceeds uh, that uh, uh, chain trion of constant. Okay, so uh, in this case the functional is unbounded below and uh, there is no hope of, uh, of minimizing. Okay, so uh, if you compare to the classical uniformization problem, uh, the subcritical case uh, corresponds to uh, k less or equal to zero. Okay? And uh, uh, by the way, when you are on S2, and if all the weights are negative, uh, the subcriticality is also necessary. And uh, the classical counterpart uh, of uh, the critical case uh, is actually the sphere. Okay? Uh, so, of course, uh, for the classical uniformization problem, you can solve uh, always. Uh, but in general, the picture of the functional uh, could be something like this. Okay, so you might have a lower bound, but uh, uh, you're not guaranteed uh, to be able to minimize because you might have uh, some kind of asymptotes. Okay, and the supercritical case, uh, in fact, does not uh, have uh, uh, a classical counterpart. Okay, and in fact, in some cases, uh, you cannot solve uh, for this problem. So one example which is well known is the teardrop, okay? So take the sphere with only one singular point, uh, then there is no constant curvature metric on uh, such an object. And uh, in general, if you take two singularities, uh, uh, then the weights uh, have to be the same, okay? So these results uh, you prove uh, basically exploiting uh, the um, Möbius uh, transformations and it's a sort of cousin warner type uh, abstraction. Okay, and uh, in a paper by Chen and Lee, uh, it was shown that uh, if all the weights are negative, uh, and if you are in the supercritical case, then necessarily the surface has to be an American football, okay, if you can solve. And uh, uh, in a paper by Eremenko, uh, the case of three singularities on S2 uh, was studied, and he derived uh, necessary and sufficient conditions for existence uh, using basically monodromy methods, okay, so patching uh, somehow pieces of uh, uh, spheres uh, together. Okay, uh, so I said uh, in general when uh, you are in the supercritical case there is no chance of minimizing but still uh, you may hope to be able to find settled points. Okay, so uh, I would like to describe a general uh, variational strategy to attack the problem. Uh, 
using uh, variational methods. And that's, uh, uh, say, the general strategy you use uh, in, a, in an abstract uh, setting. So you're given a functional on uh, some Hilbert space uh, with values into R, okay, so smooth. And a classical strategy to finding critical points of a functional is to look at the structure of the sublevels uh, of this functional. Okay, so uh, here's one uh, uh, maybe simple example: uh, just uh, x squared minus y squared in R2. Okay, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, you see there is a change in topology uh, from uh, positive sublevels uh, into negative uh, sublevels. Okay, so the sublevel. Uh, transforms uh, from connected to disconnected. So eventually this is a complicated proof uh, to show that the origin uh, actually is a settled point uh, for, uh, for this function. Okay? And the general idea is the following. So if you're given two values a and b, a less than b, uh, if there are no critical points uh, in between these two values, uh, then you can use a gradient flow to deform uh, the higher sublevel into the lower sublevel. Okay? So you never get stuck, in a sense. Okay, this is called the deformation lemma. Uh, and the consequence is that uh, if you observe a change in topology between the two sublevels, uh, then there should be a critical point. Okay, so uh, I would like to apply actually this general strategy, so which is more theory, uh, to this functional, uh, showing two properties that for this uh, specific functional. Uh, high sublevels are topologically trivial, contractible, okay, while uh, low sublevels inherit uh, somehow topological structure from a finite dimensional CW complex, uh, uh, which I call sigma rho alpha, which depends on the topology of sigma and uh, the divisor alpha. So I will tell you exactly what uh, this uh, object is. So the idea is to show that uh, by the deformation lemma, if uh, this object, so which describes uh, the topology of low sublevels, is non-contractible, then you should get existence, because high sublevels have a trivial topology. Okay? Uh, but you should be careful uh, in making uh, such a statements, because uh, asymptotes uh, can give you trouble. Okay? So uh, this is one example in which uh, uh, you have an asymptote and uh, no critical points uh, between uh, c minus epsilon and c plus epsilon, okay? And still, uh, you're not able to deform uh, the higher sublevel, which is disconnected to the lower one, okay? So you need uh, some kind of uh, compactness criterion. The problem here is that if you follow a gradient flow uh, for this functional, okay, that will bring you to infinity, okay? You lose compactness. And uh, so you need some kind of uh, compactness criterion to be able to apply such a statement. And uh, this is done uh, uh, by blow-up analysis, okay? So let me discuss uh, compactness of uh, solutions uh, of, the, of the problem. Eh? Uh, and this is done using blow-up analysis, uh, so as uh, people usually do in geometry, so you rescale solutions and try to get uh, some standard profiles. So here they are simple and uh, only of two kinds. So we have the sphere. Uh, with total curvature for pi and the American football. So I already remarked that uh, uh, with this notation, the integral of k over the American football is 4 pi 1 plus alpha. Okay. So uh, when alpha is integer, indeed, uh, uh, the American football is not the only profile, so there are also some sort of wiggly versions, but that doesn't affect uh, the quantization uh, of, the, of the curvature. Okay. So uh, there was a result, uh, indeed, uh, about blow-up uh, of solutions for this problem. Eh? So in, uh, in the smooth case, uh, there are results from the early 90s by Brezis and Merle, Lee and Shafrir, mostly. And uh, for the singular case, uh, uh, the analysis has been done by Bertolucci and Tarantello uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, so you consider a sequence uh, rho n, which is bounded, and a sequence of solutions uh, of, uh, of this equation. Okay? Then you have uh, an alternative. Either you have uh, uniform boundedness of, uh, of these solutions, or if there is blow up, solutions would blow up uh, k spheres, uh, plus possibly American footballs uh, at the singular points. And this concentration phenomenon uh, uh, leads uh, to some quantization uh, because the limit curvature somehow should be given by 4k pi, 
so which is the total curvature of k-spheres, plus the curvatures you get uh, from the American footballs. Okay, so you will blow up at some regular points possibly, and uh, at some subset uh, of the singular points. All right, so if blow up occurs, uh, uh, there is a quantization of curvature, so necessarily the limit uh, value of rho must belong uh, to uh, a family of elements in, of this form, so which you can write down uh, as uh, uh, sums uh, of this type. Okay, so. Uh, there is a quantization of the limit curvature in case of blow-up. And an immediate consequence of this uh, result, uh, which has been also refined uh, by Chen, Lin, and, and Zhang, okay, but I will care about the, uh, the quantization mostly, is that if you avoid uh, those uh, uh, critical values for the curvature, then you stay compact. Okay? So if rho doesn't belong to, to this set, then uh, you have uh, compactness of solutions, so they will stay uniformly bounded, uh, and also, uh, in fact, the deformation lemma holds true. Okay? So, uh, in fact, if you can pick up some difference in topology between different sublevels, uh, then there will be a critical point uh, in between. So the second statement is actually non-completely uh, trivial uh, and uh, relies, the, relies on some entropy inequality proved by Struve uh, at the end of the, of the 80s. Okay, so uh, topology of high sublevels, uh, uh, I claimed uh, that uh, it's uh, trivial, okay? So how do you show it? Um, well, if you have compactness of solutions, uh, then you can uh, basically deform uh, by gradient flow the full uh, functional space uh, you're working with, so which is a vector space and therefore contractible, onto some high sublevel, okay? Uh, so you have something like this. So for the saddle function, uh, which I showed before, so you can deform the whole plane uh, into the interior of two hyperbolas. Okay, so you would obtain uh, some contractible set. And therefore, uh, being uh, high sublevels, uh, deformation retracts uh, of uh, vector spaces, they will have uh, trivial topology. Uh, what about low sublevels? Uh, so let me recall uh, the quantization property of uh, blowing up solutions. Uh, okay, so if you blow up at a regular point, uh, you get an amount uh, 4 pi of curvature, while uh, if you blow up at a singular point, uh, you get an amount uh, 4 pi 1 plus alpha. Okay? Uh, somehow the main uh, uh, tool in our analysis is that uh, we can prove a similar result uh, basically for arbitrary functions. Okay? So uh, the principle is the following. So if you concentrate uh, any finite amount of conformal volume near uh, a regular point, then you get an amount uh, at least uh, 4 pi of curvature, while if you concentrate uh, near a singular point, uh, then you get an amount uh, 4 pi 1 plus alpha of curvature. Okay, so somehow you weight uh, the points uh, differently. And the general principle is the following. Uh, so uh, the total curvature which is available is rho, so dictated by the gauss bonnet formula, and if you keep uh, adding volume, uh, at uh, those regular or singular points, uh, eventually you will exhaust uh, all the available curvature and uh, you have to stick uh, to finitely many concentration points. So that's the general principle, which I will try to illustrate. Okay, so uh, based on this principle, you can consider uh, a weighted cardinality as follows. Uh, so you weight uh, a regular point uh, for pi and you weight uh, a singular point uh, 4 pi 1 plus alpha, okay, depending on the weight at that point. Uh, and then you extend uh, uh, this cardinality uh, to finite set just by additivity, okay? And the set uh, of, uh, say, admissible configurations uh, you would expect uh, would be uh, somehow the unit measures supported on finite sets for which uh, the weighted cardinality is less than rho. Okay, so you allow concentrations which uh, do not exhaust uh, all the possible curvature, otherwise it would be too much. Okay, so elements uh, in this family can be written as formal sums uh, of Dirac deltas with some, uh, uh, with some weights, and which are called uh, formal barycenters of the surface. So uh, the points xi are in sigma and the weights uh, ti are positive, uh, 
and uh, you can normalize so that uh, uh, it becomes a unit measure. Okay, so you obtain uh, uh, a finite dimensional object. Okay, but uh, so what's uh, the structure of uh, of this object? Well, uh, it's a family of measures. So somehow the natural topology to be used uh, should be the weak topology of distributions. Okay, so which by the way induces a metric on uh, on this object. So what's the structure of uh, of this set? Well. Uh, it's of finite dimension, but it's not uh, smooth, indeed. Uh, okay, and uh, it's a stratified set, uh, uh, so union uh, of uh, manifolds uh, with or without boundary uh, of different dimensions. And uh, the problem is, uh, okay, you can write down elements uh, of uh, this uh, mm, set sigma rho alpha in this way. Okay, so they seem to depend smoothly on uh, on parameters. But there are, uh, first of all, equivalence relations, because somehow different uh, combinations of this type can represent the same uh, element. And also there are uh, rules uh, dictated by the uh, weighted cardinality. Okay, so we want uh, that uh, the sum of the weighted cardinalities uh, should be less than rho. Alright, so take uh, this example, okay, when uh, uh, 4 pi is less than uh, 4 pi times the sum, of alpha 1 and alpha 2, so on the torus with two singularities, which is less than rho and less than uh, 4 pi 2 plus alpha 1. Okay? So what is happening here is that uh, you can consider these combinations uh, and uh, you're allowed to count uh, one regular point. You can count two singular points, so take a combination of the two, but note uh, a regular point and a singular point. Okay, so what you get in this case is uh, the surface you started with, with a one-dimensional handle. Okay, and uh, in the case of three points, for example, uh, if the weights are negative, uh, you can combine uh, uh, the three of them to obtain, uh, say, a torus uh, with some uh, sort of uh, sail attached uh, at, uh, at three points. Okay, so this uh, set sigma rho alpha looks, uh, looks like this. Uh, so this was the case uh, for, uh, say, negative weights. Um, for uh, positive weights, usually you are allowed to take uh, less points because the weight would be greater than 4 pi, so they're more easily forbidden, in a sense. Uh, and uh, as, uh, say, rho increases and as the number of singular points increases, somehow the structure of this set becomes uh, really very complicated, so it could be a complete mess. Um, so that's uh, our result in terms of this set uh, uh, sigma rho alpha. Okay. So uh, let me recall the set, the values of uh, the possible uh, blow-ups for the for the curvature. Okay. So which can be written in this way. And uh, so that's a theory which is actually work in progress, but uh, somehow close to completion. Eh? So if uh, rho does not belong uh, to this uh, say critical set uh, lambda alpha. And uh, if uh, sigma rho alpha, so this family of measures, is not a contractible set, as, for example, in the pictures uh, we saw before, uh, then you can solve uh, for the problem. Okay. Uh, the proof, as I said, uses uh, uh, most theory. Okay. And uh, there are two assumptions here. So rho shouldn't belong to the set uh, lambda alpha. So that's used to apply the deformation lemma. Okay. And uh, as I said, high energy sublevels uh, are contractible, uh, while I claim that uh, the structure of uh, low sublevels uh, has to do with this uh, family of measures uh, sigma rho alpha. Okay? So I would like to mostly explain that in the rest of the talk. And uh, uh, since we are assuming that this set is non-contractible, then uh, okay, we apply most theory, as I said. All right, so uh, some comparison to some more recent results. Uh, so using this approach, uh, we were able to uh, prove this result uh, in some special cases. Uh, so still with uh, Alessandro Carlotto in the case of negative alphas. Uh, in the case of uh, positive weights and positive genus uh, with uh, Daniele Bartolucci and Francesca De Marchis. Uh, and uh, for, uh, say, positive alphas, but uh, low values uh, of the total curvature in uh, two other joint papers with uh, Ruiz uh, and Bartolucci. Uh, and none of these results uh, actually dealt uh, with uh, weights uh, with different signs, with the exception of the result by Eremenko, who studied uh, three singularities uh, on the sphere. Okay. 
And there is indeed a program by uh, two people in Taiwan, Chen and Lin, to compute the Lagrange-Schau degree of, uh, of the equation. So they have a paper appeared uh, in 2010 for the case of uh, integer weights. And uh, this was actually done for the regular case, so with no singularities uh, uh, in 2003, still, uh, still by time. And uh, I would like to say that in general, uh, uh, you would expect to get stronger uh, results uh, using most theory. Because uh, uh, most theory can detect uh, solutions even when the total ratio of the degree of the equation uh, is zero. Okay, so you would expect uh, to get more general results with this approach. Uh, so in the rest of the talk, I would like to persuade you that uh, somehow considering this uh, weird object, uh, sigma rho alpha, is actually maybe the right thing to do for uh, when studying this problem. Uh, and I will give you uh, a couple of reasons. Huh? Uh, so we showed uh, that uh, the non-contractibility of this set of measures uh, is uh, sufficient uh, to obtain uh, solutions of the equation. Uh, and uh, you may wonder whether uh, it might be also possibly necessary, okay? so which is not, uh, which is not known. Uh, however, there is an interesting result by Alessandro Carlotto, uh, which is the following. So if you uh, fix any surface with a metric G and uh, some points, uh, P1, Pm, then you can find weights for which uh, the problem uh, is not solvable. Okay? So uh, previous non existence results, which are the ones I mentioned before, were only available on S2 with uh, at most uh, three singularities, so mostly using the Mobius uh, uh, action. Uh, but here there is no restriction uh, either on the genus uh, or uh, on the conformal class. So these are the first uh, non existent results uh, in, uh, uh, for, uh, say, positive genus. And uh, so they're inspired, uh, in fact, uh, by uh, this characterization. Okay, so uh, in these cases, in fact, uh, this set of measures would, would be contractible, and uh, you would sort of tend to believe that there might be non existence. Okay. And uh, so in this paper, he also gives uh, necessary and sufficient conditions uh, for the non contractibility of uh, this set of measures. Uh, when all the weights are negative. Okay? So in general, uh, uh, it's hard to find uh, optimal conditions uh, for the topological characterization of this set, uh, uh, and uh, especially on spheres. So on Tori, you can play somehow with the uh, first fundamental group, uh, say. And uh, I mean, it would be really nice to get help uh, from some topologies to, to be able to uh, find clean conditions uh, for the non-contractibility of, uh, of this set. So this is another persuasion attempt eh? so, uh, to try to convince you that uh, this set is natural. So uh, as I said, you can write elements uh, of uh, uh, sigma rho alpha in this form, eh? so as weighted sums uh, of Dirac deltas, okay? which are normalized. And I justified uh, uh, this set uh, looking basically at uh, the quantization results uh, for blowing up solutions. Okay? Uh, so you know that uh, a blow up of solution at a regular or singular point carries uh, a fixed amount of curvature. While here we're putting some uh, real weights uh, in front of these uh, Dirac deltas, so I'm taking the weights to be arbitrary. Uh, but in fact, uh, uh, I'm not claiming this holds for solutions, but only for uh, functions uh, with low energy, in a sense. Okay, so there should be more flexibility. And in fact, uh, uh, it is possible to find uh, some test functions uh, which are parametrized uh, on this element, uh, which uh, somehow describe well uh, the low energy sublevels. Okay, so they're parametrized uh, on this family of elements, uh, and if you consider the formal, uh, sorry, the conformal volume associated uh, to such uh, test functions, okay, so this converge weakly to the elements uh, in the space of measures uh, you started with. And also they have the property that the energy goes to minus infinity uniformly for the choice uh, of sigma in this set uh, sigma rho alpha. Okay? So what you can do is to embed copies of this topological space into arbitrarily low sublevels uh, of the functional. Okay? So I would like to see also somehow a sort of converse uh, characterization. So I saw that uh, you can pass from uh, this family of measures into low sublevels, and I would like to show actually the opposite uh, uh, characterization in a sense. Okay. And uh, uh, so this is done uh, 
so I saw that I can embed copies of this object into low sub-levels, okay? I would like to uh, somehow give a, an opposite characterization. And uh, I would like to show the following, uh, that uh, for uh, energy sufficiently low, okay, then the conformal volume uh, has to look like uh, one of these objects, so it has to be close uh, to an element of sigma rho alpha in the distributional sense. Okay, so that would be a sort of optimal characterization uh, of uh, low energy levels. Okay, and to do this, uh, the general philosophy is that, uh, say, a spreading of conformal volume of the surface uh, gives indeed a better constant uh, in the weighted moser twinger inequality. Okay, and then you proceed in this way. Okay, so you use a contradiction argument as follows. Suppose you have spreading of conformal volume. I claim that you get a better constant uh, in the moser twinger inequality. And if you get a better constant, uh, it means uh, that you can uh, more easily control uh, the logarithmic term uh, in the functional, so the tricky term. Okay? So that will give you a lower bound uh, on the energy functional. Okay? So you can uh, somehow use uh, this uh, chain of uh, implications uh, in the opposite way. So suppose uh, that uh, the energy is low, so namely that the lower bound uh, on the functional fails, that means uh, that uh, you don't get a better constant in the moser twinger inequality, which means that you cannot have uh, spreading on volume, so this will favor concentration uh, of conformal volume. Okay, so I would like to give an idea of how this uh, works uh, more precisely. And this is done uh, actually uh, using some improved uh, moser twinger inequalities. Okay, so uh, this is the moser twinger inequality uh, in the classical case, so when there is no weight, and the constant you get is uh, 1 over 4 pi. Okay, so this holds uh, for uh, u arbitrary, but the idea is that uh, if uh, u satisfies some extra assumptions, uh, then you can maybe get uh, a better value here. Okay. So here are uh, a couple of very well-known uh, examples. Uh, so one by Moser, uh, back to 1973. So if you consider uh, even functions on the sphere with the, with the round metric, uh, then in fact you can push the constant uh, from 1 over 4 pi to 1 over 8 pi. Okay? And another well-known example uh, is due to Oban, still uh, on the uh, standard sphere. So you can push the constant uh, up to almost uh, 1 over a pi, provided uh, the function u is balanced. So what does this mean? Uh, that if you embed the sphere into a tree, and if you look at the conformal volume uh, given by u, so which is e to the 2u, okay, uh, then the center of mass has to be at the origin of S3. Okay? So this is another case in which you can push down uh, the constant here. <coughs> All right, so uh, actually uh, this theorem of Oban uh, relies on, uh, say, a more general principle, uh, which was uh, exploited by Chen and Lee, uh, basically by localizing uh, the moser twinger inequality. So that's the statement. Uh, so <coughs> if you are able to spread uh, the conformal volume uh, over a certain number of uh, uh, subsets of the surface, okay, so if you find, uh, say, L plus one sets, each of them containing a finite portion of the total volume, and assuming that uh, they have positive mutual distance, okay, so then you can push down the constant uh, from uh, 1 over 4 pi to uh, 1 over 4 pi times the number of regions uh, you're considering here, okay, up to an epsilon. All right, so what is the consequence? Uh, uh, is that uh, somehow spreading of conformal volume uh, uh, gives you a better constant here, all right? So which means a lower bound on the functional. On the contrary, so if the energy is low, then you should expect uh, concentration of volume. So suppose that uh, the constant rho, so the total curvature, is less than uh, 4 k plus 1 pi, okay? So then uh, this lemma tells you the following. So give me an epsilon and an r, so I can find an energy sufficiently low so that uh, almost all the volume uh, up to an epsilon will be contained uh, in k balls uh, uh, centered of radius r, centered at some points uh, of the surface. So this means uh, that if rho 
is less than this number here, so 4 k plus 1 pi, and if the energy is sufficiently low, then the conformal volume has to concentrate near at most k points uh, of the surface. So it will look like uh, a sum of Dirac deltas, okay, from the point of view of uh, measures, say, in the distributional sense. Right? So, uh, using a covering argument, argument, so this is kind of uh, easy to explain heuristically. So, if the volume cannot be spread uh, into, say, k plus 1 regions, then it should be concentrated near at most k regions. Okay, so this, I hope this sounds uh, kind of reasonable. All right, so what is the role of, uh, the role of singularities, which I haven't uh, treated so far? Okay, so let me recall uh, the chain trion of inequality in the presence of, uh, of a weight. So the constant you get uh, is uh, the minimum between 4 pi and 4 pi uh, 1 plus alpha j. So in, in a first paper with uh, Carlotto, we extended uh, uh, Chen and Lee's inequality to the case of negative uh, weights, uh, still using some kind of uh, localization argument. Okay. Uh, but for positive weights, uh, so you might hope that uh, still if the volume measure is concentrated near the singular points, then you might have uh, some, might see some effect uh, of the vanishing of the weight near these points. Okay, so I recall that h of x uh, behaves like the distance uh, from the singularity to the power to alpha. Okay, so you might expect that if the volume uh, gets close to there, so e to the 2u, then you might see uh, some effects, okay? Uh, but you should be careful uh, in uh, such a statement because uh, you might still concentrate a bubble arbitrarily close to a singular point and uh, have the energy go to minus infinity, okay? So you would need to pick up uh, some sort of uh, more uh, refined or microscopic, microscopic structure of the conformal volume near uh, these singular points, okay? So you want to be more careful. So you might expect that uh, something like uh, a center of mass condition uh, uh, could be the, the right one. So that's uh, somehow a nice guess, uh, but uh, it's actually more subtle than, uh, than just that. And here is actually one uh, um, version of the improved inequality uh, using uh, some kind of uh, angular moments uh, on uh, condition on the, on the volume measure. So uh, we proved uh, uh, this proposition. So to simplify things, uh, consider just uh, the unit disk of R2, okay, with uh, one singularity at the origin. So just uh, the simple, simplest possible case, okay, with positive weight. So the proposition is the following. So suppose the weight is positive and fix uh, any positive epsilon, okay? Suppose uh, the conformal volume satisfies uh, this uh, vanishing moment condition, okay? So you look at the, uh, at the conformal volume times uh, x to the 2 alpha, which uh, plays the role of uh, h of x, and you assume that uh, if you multiply it by, uh, say, some uh, Fourier mode, Okay, this product is vanishing in C uh, for J running from 1 to K. Okay, so the center of mass condition will be just uh, J equal to 1. Okay, so suppose you, you're given these extra conditions. Okay, so then you can actually improve the constant uh, from uh, Chen and Li's, uh, which is 1 over 4 pi, to uh, almost the American football one. Okay, uh, so you can get very close actually to 4 pi 1 plus alpha. So precisely you get 1 over 4 pi times the minimum uh, between 1 plus alpha and 1 plus k. So for k large enough, you get in fact the American football constant. So you can think of this uh, as a sort of nonlinear Fourier uh, improvement. So if this were a linear problem, uh, so if you had uh, say the L2 norm of u here, and the Dirichlet norm uh, here, then you would just use Fourier, okay? Uh, but this is a sort of nonlinear version. So I think well, I have really no time to say anything about the proof uh, of uh, this result, so which takes mostly uh, a lot of pain. And uh, yeah, I'd like to, uh, to continue. So 
uh, some comments. So the, the main new feature of this inequality is that, uh, in fact, these are scaling invariant assumptions uh, on the conformal volume. Okay, so somehow if you take uh, your conformal factor and you dilate it, say close to the to the origin, so it might look uh, very much like a Dirac delta. So it's very much uh, concentrated microscopic microscopically, but still you might get an improvement uh, in the inequality here. Okay, and uh, so the scaling invariance is the main uh, new feature of the of the inequality because you might allow say. Uh, any, uh, say, rate of concentration. And the result is uh, kind of sharp, OK? So you f find counterexamples if, uh, in fact, uh, one of these conditions uh, fails. And this also recovers uh, some uh, improved versions uh, of the inequality, which uh, were given by McCowen back to the 80s and Dolbo Esteban Tarantello. So McCowen was treating the case of functions with ZK symmetry, so some discrete uh, symmetry group. And they were treating the case of uh, uh, radial functions. Okay? So adding symmetry somehow helps to get uh, bounds uh, from below on, uh, on this kind of functionals, uh, as usual. And uh, uh, so th the main comment is that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, those assumptions uh, are just, uh, say, 2K constraints. OK, so I'm assuming the vanishing uh, of, uh, say, K numbers uh, in C. OK, so these are two real, uh, 2K real constraints. OK, so I mean, the improved inequality will be satisfied uh, uh, in the function space in a set uh, of uh, finite codimension. And uh, sets of finite codimensions you can intersect uh, using uh, transversality arguments or, uh, say, degree theory. Okay, so you can apply the min max machinery once you have attained uh, uh, such a condition. Okay, so if you require symmetry, of course, uh, everything is gone because it's just uh, infinitely many constraints. But these are finitely many constraints. Okay, and uh, you can actually apply min max theory to prove existence uh, uh, of critical points. And uh, uh, let me say that in general, so I just treated one example, but uh, in general, so if you really want to see the structure of the full set of measures, uh, sigma or alpha, you might need to improve the constant uh, even more. So you have somehow to interpolate between uh, microscopic and macroscopic uh, uh, um, structures, in a sense, uh, regimes. OK, so I would like to conclude uh, with some uh, uh, open problems. Uh. So. Uh, as I said, it would be very nice to have a clean uh, algebraic condition in terms of the divisor and uh, of the genus of, uh, of the surface to guarantee actually the uh, non-triviality of this set of measures, okay, which uh, uh, by our theory leads uh, to existence. And as well, it would be nice to find uh, somehow general uh, non-existent results. Okay, so ideally, I mean, uh, it would be great to prove uh, that maybe this might be a necessary and sufficient condition. Uh, but maybe the non-existent result would be even uh, harder, I guess. And uh, in fact, in many situations, uh, the parameter rho, so which is the, the integral of the curvature of the smooth part might actually belong to the critical set uh, lambda alpha. So we were avoiding those values for compactness reasons. Uh, and uh, uh, you might uh, see that this set belongs to lambda alpha just by, by the gauss bonnet formula. Okay? And in this case, so if you still want to attack uh, the problem uh, variationally, you might need uh, some more refined blow-up analysis with some uh, sort of uh, refined geometric information on the blown-up manifold. So like a sort of positive mass theorem, for example. And uh, uh, in, in a spectacular work by Lin and Wang, so uh, the case of flat or I with one singularity with weight equal to one uh, is treated. Okay? So what you're doing here, uh, so you're considering, uh, the, say, a flat torus, okay, not necessarily the square torus. And uh, you're concentrating somehow uh, all the positive curvature uh, on the smooth part, while the negative curvature uh, will be concentrated at the singular point. Okay? So what they prove, uh, and this is really spectacular, is that uh, you have existence if and only if the Green's function of the, of the Laplacian of the torus, so depending on the geometry of the flat torus, has uh, five or three critical points. 
So if you have five critical points, you get existence, otherwise non-existence. And they use a really deep uh, theory of elliptic functions. And uh, I mean, it's a theorem which uh, I find really spectacular and, and astonishing. So I mean, it would be also very nice to somehow uh, interpret this theorem, so to find a good explanation. And uh, uh, well, as I said, these equations also arise uh, from, from physics. And uh, uh, the scalar case uh, would uh, arise from uh, uh, abelian models. And uh, when you have non-abelian models, then uh, you're led to some coupled uh, uh, systems of the equations, so so-called TODA systems, uh, which also have a geometric interpretation because they describe uh, holomorphic curves uh, in CPN. And in general, this. Uh, system is actually quite uh, challenging, so it would be nice to find generic existence results so in this case. All right, so I stop here and thank you for the attention. <laughs> and also one more, say happy birthday to Eugenio. So. <laughs> so what was the wiggly American football on page 14? Oh yeah, the, uh, so you can get it uh, I cannot draw it, in fact, uh, um, but I can write it uh, uh, as a conformal deformation uh, of uh, the Euclidean metric. Okay? So the standard bubble would be something like this. So you have one positive parameter lambda, and you consider the logarithm of uh, lambda divided by, uh, so in this notation, I guess it's. I might screw up the exponents, uh, but it's something like this, uh, mod x squared, uh, and maybe everything is uh, squared. Okay, so this would be u. Uh, the American football metric uh, uh, would have uh, a 1 plus alpha here and a 1 plus alpha here. Okay, so it's a nice uh, radial function. In fact, uh, um, when alpha is integer, solution, so this depends uh, basically on uh, only one parameter, which is lambda. When alpha is integer, uh, you somehow get a different uh, polynomial of x uh, here. Uh, I can draw a picture of the solution, so this would uh, somehow be like solitons. Okay. And when alpha is integer, then uh, you would get uh, sort of two peaks. Okay, when alpha is equal to 1, you get two peaks. And when alpha is integer, you get, uh, say, k peaks, uh, which are distributed uh, along uh, the vertices of a polygon. Okay? And this somehow matches uh, very well uh, with uh, our condition, so on, uh, on vanishing moments. So in a sense, uh, if you have uh, enough symmetry, then uh, somehow this condition is automatically satisfied, in a sense. And, uh, Somehow, if you, if you fail uh, to get zero kth momentum, uh, then you somehow plug in uh, one of those functions to show that uh, you do not get the improved inequality. So that's somehow why I believe this improvement is uh, almost optimal. But you don't have a, a picture of the solution? No, 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 unfortunately not, yeah. But they carry the same uh, total curvature, so yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, I discussed this with uh, Peter Topping, uh, and uh, as I said, uh, okay, there are cases in which uh, um, you shouldn't expect existence uh, of uh, constant curvature metrics, but he would suspect that uh, there should be possibly always a rich soliton with some maybe nice, uh, uh, say, asymptotic conditions in their singularity. And if that's the case, maybe it might be a way to prove uh, uh, non-existence of uh, constant curvature, maybe, yeah. But it's a very interesting question, yeah. By the way, in one talk I gave, someone corrected me to say North American. North American. <laughs> 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 <laughs>